Watch my homies, DJ80 here, and today I am going to be doing a review of the LD Systems Maui 5. Now, this isn't the Maui 5 Go, it's not the Maui 5 Go 100, it's not any variant of the Maui 5 except the original plug in Maui 5 speakers. So, if that's what you're after, stay with me and uh, watch the video. All right, uh, before I start, um, I just want to say a couple of things. The first thing is um, I'm working on a big project at the moment, um, which is an outdoor disco rig. So um, I've got stuff everywhere. I've been doing this for a couple of months. Um, I'm nearly at the end. Um, it will be on my video channel um, and you'll be able to see it. Uh, but I apologize now for the state of the room because I have literally got stuff all over the place. Um, <clears throat> the second thing I wanted to say was when I bought these I was originally looking at buying the Maui 5 Go's and I've wanted a pair of these for absolutely ages um, and I've seen some reviews and I wanted them for just normal re uh, normal gigs um, you know sort of 100 people and um, I just like the look of them um, like many mobile DJs I'm kind of getting sick of lifting and shifting really heavy speakers um, and I live in an apartment so I'm up and down the stairs for each load and unload as well and um, yeah, I, I really like the look of the lightweight, you know, high powered ones. And I've had Maui um, 28s, which are also on my YouTube channel. Um, and the sound quality on those is the best out of all the speakers I've owned. So, uh, you know, I had confidence in Maui, uh, in Audi systems. Um, but then um, I got to the point where I was about to click buy. Um, this was from Why Buy New or Get In The Mix, same company. And I thought I'd just give them a call just to check that they had all the stock and that in there and um, I was thinking about it and um, they had the normal Maui 5s which I've got here are 415 each uh, at the time of doing this video the Maui 5 goes are 545 pound each um, and the new Maui 5 go 100s are 645 pound each so um, if you're watching this from America and you're looking to convert that into dollars um, add an extra third and that will give you roughly you know your cost in dollars so um, I'm thinking do I want to pay an extra 250 pound or 400 dollars to have battery powered speakers now I have battery powered up lighting um, and I have battery powered Equinox lithium tubes both on my channel um, but I don't have a full mobile rig that's battery powered so even if I do have battery powered speakers, I'm still going to need a power supply when I get to my gig. Um, I've got a Denon Prime 4 um, and some other lighting, um, so I'm going to need power. Um, so do I really need battery powered speakers right now? And I thought about it and, and the conclusion I came to was actually no, I don't. Uh, because even if I use them as battery powered when I'm out gigging, I've still got to bring them home and charge them. Um, and, and you know these uh, lithium batteries, you have to take care of them and you have to store them at certain temperatures and stuff to get the maximum life out of them. Um, I did toy with the idea of also buying a Denon Prime Go, uh, but I've looked at the units, they're really small. I've got a Prime 4 at the moment and these little Go's are tiny. It will work with me because all of my music's run through the engine software, um, but I'm kind of thinking I'm going to wait um, and see what else comes out in the next year or two. Um, if I decide to do battery powered, then I'll, I'll want everything battery powered or none of it battery powered. I don't want most of it battery powered, but I still need a plug socket. So um, that's why I decided not to go for the Go. Um, and I also had a thing in the back of my mind. Why did they have the Maui 5 Go 100? Um, I, I'm, I could be wrong. I'm just speculating, but I'm thinking, well, why have they done these 100s? Um, that are battery powered as opposed to just the Maui 5 Go's and I started thinking is there an issue with the normal Maui 5 Go batteries um, so all of that just led me to this point here where I, I've just bought the normal Maui 5's but for now let's crack on with the Audi Systems Maui 5 review I've got them sitting here let's have a look and we'll see what we've got in the box so here's the two boxes ordered yesterday from Why Buy New and uh, they were delivered today at half one can't fault those guys Right, this is what we get in the box. Uh, we get our main subunit. Uh, we get our three our column in three parts. Uh, we get two leads, one's um, European lead and one's a UK three pin plug. And we get the manual. 
Right, the three column pieces slot in to this opening here and two of them are spacers and one is speakers and you can always tell with the Maui's which ones are speakers because it's got the LD badge on. Now according to the instructions you have to have at least one spacer in at any given point so you can't just do it straight from um, the, the tweeters and that straight to the sub. So I'm going to put these all together and it is really quite straightforward that just slots in there and then this one slots in there and then the last one slots in there so I'll get my tape measure and give you some dimensions it's quite high so the total height when you're using both spaces is two meters just about there or thereabouts as you can see then the height of the sub itself is 40 40 centimeters high apologies I'm using my phone and we're looking at one end uh, to the other about 40 40 long as well and there are thereabouts looking at the back then this is what we have um, in front of us so um, we can uh, input with a mic here so it does say in the booklet that the mic port here is a combo jack um, but it doesn't have phantom power so your mic will need to be powered unless it's um, uh, being plugged into a mixer uh, this one here is uh, high Z so this is for musical instruments such as guitars you've even got a little guitar symbol and it also includes a little uh, three millimeter uh, jack for mp3 players I don't know if any of you remember those from back in the day um, and it does say that you can have um, both of these on at the same time so you could have um, backing instruments or an instrumental track playing for your mp3 player and then you could sort of play your guitar as well not really relevant to me because I'll be using um, these for DJing and um, I think I'll probably plug my mic into my Prime 4 as well because I get a better volume um, so uh, this top row here are uh, volume selectors so um, if I start from the right so this is for our Bluetooth so we've got a little function here where we compare to Bluetooth I'm going to be doing that shortly with my iPad um, and all we have to do is press and hold that down for five seconds and this little blue LED will flash once it's permanently on then it's paired to your Bluetooth device um, it also says in there if you're moving around with your device so if I start moving around with my iPad and uh, it loses connection um, it will wait 90 seconds for you to get back into range um, and then will automatically restore connection so it, if you are wandering around um, with your phone or whatever and you're playing from a distance and it does cut out you just need to get a little bit closer to it you don't have to go all the way back to it and go through the whole pairing process again um, and that's our, our volume for that if the volume coming out isn't too high then we have separate volumes for the, the guitar port and for the mic port as well and then we have a line in volume as well so this is for our line in ports that are at the back which we have a left and right so some small um, well, some of the cheaper DJ controllers you can get don't necessarily have a sound card in so when you plug your wires into your speakers the volume isn't particularly loud um, so this obviously acts like a gain button which will help increase that volume from that line input okay so it's not your general volume button that's a bit further down um, you also have a boost here as well um, for high frequencies for your guitar then we have a little LED panel so when we plug it in we should have a green light 
um, and then when it receives a signal, so I've plugged something in, an instrument or my, uh, my line inputs, um, that green light should light up. Then uh, we've got a limit light, which will flash if we're pushing too much signal through it, or we're trying to go too loud, basically. So occasionally it might flash and that's fine. If it stays permanently on, you're pushing it too much, and then you'll get this red light of pain. And when this red light comes on, um, the speaker will switch itself off to cool down because you pushed it too hard. So we don't want that red light ever to come on. And then at the bottom here, you've got um, a separate uh, adjustable volume for your bass. And you also have your main level uh, dial there as well. So you can increase your overall volume. Now the great thing about, um, oh, I'll just tell you this quickly. Uh, we've got our two combo inputs at the back. So you can have a uh, standard XLR lead, which slots in. And I do like these because they, they give you the push button to release it. Um, and that's just a nice little safety feature there. So you push the button in, comes out. Um, but you can also use your quarter inch, big quarter inch jacks. This is a lead that I've got um, made especially. You can buy them, um, but they're, they're my, one of my backup leads. Um, but basically these red and white ones here are RCA size. So they're RCA out, so that can come out of my denim. And then they turn into these big old quarter jack ones, which can just plug straight in like that. Um, moving further down, we've just got a separate, it's getting a bit dark here and it's daylight today, so I'm not quite sure why we've got that. You've got a separate little on off switch here, little rocker switch, and then your, your kettle lead goes in the back there. All right, one other thing that this has, which just reading through the manual, um, which is really good, is it has, uh, I better read what it says, LECC DSP, which is a uh, load of letters but essentially what this does is it monitors the signal going in so if um, if you're playing a track and you start getting distortion on the bass for instance for those that DJ dance music um, what it will do is rather than force you to turn the whole volume down so you don't get distortion in the bass it automatically lowers the signal from the bass the bass part of the song but keeps the main signal from your mids and your highs. So you don't have to lower your volume. It kind of does it for you. Um, it lowers the signal of the bass. It can also lower the signal of the mids and it can also lower the signal of the highs as well. And it does it all automatically internally for you. Um, so you haven't got to keep going back and forth um, and faff in with it, um, which I think is a great idea. Obviously I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I'm hoping that um, that all works. Um, and so, you still get the same volume that you, you've set it at. Um, but if one of your tracks, and we all know, you know, depending on where you get your music from, some tracks are quiet, some are a bit louder. Um, if one of your tracks has got a particularly sort of dirty bass on it, um, rather than hearing that v -v -v farty noise coming out of your speaker, um, this in theory should lower the bass part of the signal so that you keep the volume, but you don't hear the farts, which is, um, which is awesome. Right, I'm going to um, switch it all on and pair it up with my iPad and um, we'll see if we can get some music coming out of it. So let's see how easy this is to pair up then. So if I check my Bluetooth, which is on, and I've powered this on. And so in theory, all I have to do is hold this for five seconds. Let's try that again. Hold to link. Aha. Okay, so now it's trying to find this. And oh wow, look at that, it's found it already. Right, we'll have that. Maui 5. Connected. And the light is permanently on blue. Awesome. Oh, I just want to check my volume's not too high. Where are we? No, that's not 
that's all settled. Okay, let's find a track. Is my Bluetooth volume is here? Didn't press play, did I? Or did I? Mm, yeah, we play. Okay. All right, so I'll put my Bluetooth to twelve o'clock. Okay. Okay, now we're off. Okay. So the volume's coming out the top, as it should. Not much happening at the bottom. Oh, that's nice. All right, let's um, let's uh, turn it up. Let's turn it off from here. No limiters uh, uh, it's hard to explain just how loud that was um, if you heard loads of farting noises that's my phone um, I turned the bass up um, and I have already found from other speakers that when you use Bluetooth the sound isn't as clear um, no distortion on the bass it I, I think the limiter was kicking in because I knew it wanted to um, I'm just gonna try let's see if we can find something that's a little um, a little cleaner about Bellissimo, Bellissimo.
if I hadn't seen and heard that with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed that was possible. Um, okay, that's the that is the Bluetooth function. Let me tell you, I don't care what you heard um, being recorded through the phone. There was no distortion at all coming out of the sound there. Right, um, I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to try it now from my denim, where I've um, where I know you get a clearer sound when you when when you've got a direct signal. So um, let's set it up. Okay, so uh, powered up my denim. And I'm using the big quarter inch jacks, which are in the back there. And they're just using the RCA out from the back there. So we will power this back on. I'm gonna turn that Bluetooth one down. Uh, I'm gonna turn these low for now. Uh, right, I know that Bayside track um, bass on that's quite harsh so let's we're good to go channel 2 actually let's have it down uh, da, 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 da. Oh, input line so we'll change put that to 12 o'clock Well done. Let's turn the fader up. you guys um, but there was no distortion on the bass and uh, I know for a fact that that tracks a bit bit of a monster for that but right, let's try and find something just a little clearer uh, duh, that's, that's a fairly nice track this is a tune
you heard that. Um, I am so impressed with just how loud they are. I wasn't expecting them to be that loud. And bearing in mind, I want to use these for um, mobile gigs as well. Okay, let me put everything away and um, yeah, we'll get to the conclusion. Okay, I know I said uh, I was kind of to the conclusion, but um, I, I thought I'd, uh, as I had everything out, I, I wanted to test them both and, and see what the volume was. Um, this, this is incredible. Okay, so um, I've used ooh, uh, XLR outputs. So I've actually had to use a DMX cable on one because all my others are out in my trailer. So um, when you're using them as a pair, you use the left import there on mono. So that's my right speaker. Uh, that one there is on left. It's so dark. There we go. Anyway, it's on the it's on the left on mono one. And uh, I've set it up here. Let's just. So the track I'm playing is uh, Summer '91, and we'll just. gain knob here, uh, increase the gain and uh, see how loud I can get it before we get a red light. couldn't actually get it to red light um, very loud you still there uh, as you can probably tell I'm absolutely over the moon with these um, I just wasn't expecting that much punch uh, even when I spoke to the guy on why by new he said to me well you know if you're coming from Maui 28 he said you know they're not gonna be the same and I said oh I don't need the same I mean whenever I use my 28s I think the max I ever got them up to was about three quarters high um, and part of my thinking of you know getting rid of them and going for something a bit smaller was I never need to max them like they're never needed at full volume so why am I shifting these great big subs around um, and um, I said to the guy you know I'm going to test these Maui fives um, but if they're not loud enough is it all right if I return them? And he said, yeah, you know, as long as it's within 14 days and they're in the original packaging, that's fine. That's so good there. And um, so I really, 
you know, the advert said up to 100 people plus on one speaker, and I'm like, oh, for the size. Um, but now I've got them here, and um, they're perfect for what I need. But um, I'll jump to the conclusion, because there is just a couple of small um, cons that, that might affect whether you buy them or not. We'll start with um, the cons. There isn't many. Um, <clears throat> my biggest one, I think, is the uh, power lead that comes with it. And, and I like to keep the power leads that I get with equipment matched to the same equipment. So I don't like mixing and matching. Um, this one is only a metre and a half long. Um, preferred it a bit longer, but it is what it is. Um, here's the booklet and it shows you um, that you either have it with two spacers or one spacer. And I have tried slotting the, the speaker part in just without the spacer and it does slot in, but um, I don't want to break the unit and um, it actually comes up really short, so I wouldn't use it with just one. Um, but it would have been nice to have the option. And then just lastly, the only other con is it doesn't have a system out at the back. Um, I think all the other Maui's do have another little system out so you can link one speaker directly to another speaker. It's not a deal breaker for me because I use left and right anyway if I, it, it, when I'm gigging. But other than that, um, oh, honestly, you know, if you're buying this to use in a great big venue, you know, for two, three hundred people, then you've really bought the wrong speaker. You need to buy the appropriate speaker. But if you know what this is for um, and its capabilities, um, then it's spot on. Right, let's go on to the, the, the positives. So for me, by far and away, the biggest positive um, about the Maui is its lightweight portability. It's just, it's an absolute dream. And I'm actually considering um, just buying one big padded bag and sticking both speakers in it. Um, because even with them both in it, it means one load in and out um, and it's perfect. So, uh, you know, if you want a lightweight speaker, if you don't want to be lugging around big speakers um, and it's suitable for the size gigs that you do, this is absolutely spot on. It's also typical uh, LD Systems quality. Um, I mean, it's lovely finish on everything um, and it slots in really well. And the tops and bottoms, they fit in nicely, but also I've done that with one hand and I'm holding my phone with the other. So, you know, um, when I had the 28s, one of the biggest issues I had with the 28s was the columns. It was two parts um, with the four pins that stuck in each other. And you actually needed someone else to hold one end um, whilst you pulled them apart. It was practically, when they were fitted like this, it was practically impossible to get the top part of the column off. Um, and I think I actually ended up greasing um, the pins a little bit, but it, eventually what I ended up doing was transporting them as one long column. You don't have that issue with these. And the way that the column is situated sort of centrally into the, the sub means um, there's no great deal of wobble forward or backwards or sideways. It's where it's sitting here is almost um, perfectly matched. Of course, like all column speakers, you do get wobble. Uh, but this balance self balances itself quite well and um, you're going to get that with any column speaker uh, Another great plus point as you would have heard if you've watched the rest of the video It's the sound quality um, that that DSP LECC um, Thing that it's got going on You know you read about these speakers having this that and the other and you kind of take it with a pinch of salt really until you try them out but it genuinely works. There was no distortion on the bass, um, and some of those tracks were quite bassy. So it works. So I'll recap on what it does, is it takes a part of the signal um, and reduces it. So if it's a high in bass, but you want that volume coming out of the speaker, it will keep the volume, <clears throat> but it will reduce the bass frequency that's coming through. And it will do that with mids and highs as well. And it works. It, it's a piece of technology that actually works. And um, I, for me, these are going to be perfect for what I need. They're nice and loud, and they really were loud. If, if you're unsure, try and get to your local showroom um, and have a listen. And then just lastly for me, the other positive is the sound quality. Uh, without a doubt, out of all the speakers I've owned, um, Audi Systems 
the clarity um, and, and the fine detail in the sound is always what sets them just slightly apart from any other brand that I've owned. Um, it's just a really nice quality sound. So guys, that's my review of the Maui, LD Systems Maui 5. I love it, I absolutely love it. Um, I hope it's been helpful and uh, don't forget to subscribe or subscribe, whatever it is, wherever the button is. Um, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.